Hello guys, I hope you are well and I hope you haven't got any unnecessary fines since my last video. Today I'm going to speak about the teamwork, about multi-manning. So let's see what does the regulation say about multi-manning. The usual website is www.transportcommunity.eu and then transport, road transport, regulations. And today we need two files, the 561 from 2006 and if you scroll down we need the explanation of the regulation. It's very handy. So let's jump over to the regulation and the first thing we should know about the multi-manning situation. You have 30 hours and you have 30 hours to do what you have to do. So that means from the previous, from the end of the previous daily break or from the end of the previous weekly rest, you have 30 hours to do whatever you have to do. So if you take a look on the picture, so that's the end of your previous daily rest or a weekly rest. For instance, if this is Monday and if you had a weekly rest here, you finished your weekly rest or your previous daily rest, then you have 30 hours to do your shift. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, you have to do, you have to take nine hours, at least nine hours rest within this 30 hours period. So if we go back to the regulation, you can read that here. You have to take at least nine hours. And the most important part regarding to this sentence the nine hours in this case the nine hours will be your regular daily rest so it's not a reduced daily rest but a regular daily rest let's see the third one the third one in a multi-manning situation if you are the driver who's on standby who's on availability and the other driver is driving then you have the right to use 45 minutes from your availability as a break. I show you on a picture as it's easier. So if we go back to the picture. So let's say the two drivers just started together and driver A started to drive four and a half hours and you as driver B on standby, officially we just called this availability, and you can use 45 minutes as a break. So of course you have to stop the truck, but you can just swap immediately and then you can start driving immediately and you can do that all over your shift as you have the right to do that. So you don't need to take 45 minutes breaks here, here and here. Okay, the next one. As a driver, you can drive 10 hours maximum, which is four and a half here, four and a half here, one hour here, but you can organize on your own way. So you don't need to drive four and a half. So you can drive less, but of course you cannot drive more. And uh, all together, the two drivers can drive 20 hours. So that's the maximum uh, driving period. And then you have to start a nine hours break, which in this case will be a regular daily break. Okay, the next one. In order to qualify for this derogation, there must be at least two drivers on board a vehicle available for driving 
except for the first hour when one driver may drive alone. So go back to the picture again and scroll down. You can see that here when uh, driver A drives alone for one hour before being joined by driver B. This is permitted under multi-manning. So that means you have one hour to collect your colleague. If you start driving here, you have this one hour to collect driver B. And the next one is a little bit difficult, but it's possible. It's not necessary for the same two drivers to be on board for the duration of the journey. Let's go back to the picture again. And this one, as I said, it's a little bit difficult because you can use three drivers to do the multi-manning as driver A just started a single man shift. Therefore, he can apply the single man regulations. That's the reason this shift is only 24 hours and he can take here a regular daily break or whatever he can take a reduced daily break which is nine hours if he if he want to do that but let's see driver b driver b wants to use the multi-manning regulations and if you see he can do so as there is a multi-manning situation here and here so the wall shift of driver B covered by second, uh, second driver, the first part of his shift covered by a second driver here, and the second part of his shift covered by another second driver here. And that's a very special, special case, of course, uh, uh, not in the vehicle not in the vehicle and finally this guy took his brake in the vehicle but i never ever seen a situation like that so if you have more question about just leave a comment as the regulation says you can do that if you want because it's not, again, it's not necessary for the same two drivers to be on board. So that's the reason you can do that if you want to organize something like that. But it looks crazy, actually. Three drivers. Right, maybe for, I don't know, bus drivers. If you have a coach and if you organize a tour, I don't know, maybe you can use this uh, situation. Right, that's it for now, guys. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Just keep your money in your wallet. Do not pay any unnecessary fines. And just see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.